Mark Williams, Thomas, Mark, thanks for being with us. It's a very distressing case, obviously, but an intriguing one as well, isn't it? And unusual for the police to say at this stage, only a week into the inquiry, that they take the view that this young lady has come to harm. Yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, I think initially we were given a timeline to suggest that she went in the morning. I think that's highly unlikely. We're looking now for the timeline. And importantly, who was the last person that actually saw her? That's where they need to work from. The disappearance and the abduction of an adult female is extremely rare. The last time that this has really occurred is 92, when Stephanie Slater was abducted. Extremely rare. So what they're focusing on now is close members of the family, friends, contacts that she had. That takes time building up a whole picture of her life. Yeah, as you say, we had thought that she disappeared on the way to work mm. on the Thursday morning, uh, exactly a week ago from now. That it appears, it, it appears anyway, that may not have been the case. What we do know is she, she phoned her mother, as Rachel Harrison's report said, uh, in, on, on Wednesday evening, and they talked about a television program they were both watching, we assume, in different places. After mm. that, there's no real contact apart from, from one message or a couple of messages. Absolutely. Well, what we do know is that they've checked the CCTV and the normal route that she would take, she did not take on that yeah. Thursday morning at 5.30. So if you work back from that, you say, when was the last time somebody actually had sight contact with her? That was in the afternoon. She did have this contact with her mother. What the police will now need to do is via triangulation and cell analysis is establish where she was when that phone call was made and when those texts were sent. They'll be able to establish that, that will then give them an indication of the last point that she was at. You see, they're also saying that it's their belief that she was with, or she is with, or was taken by someone she knows. Now, mm -hmm. on the face of it, that would appear to make it, the investigation easier, and yet we appear to be no further ahead. To a degree, you're absolutely right. What's important, what's difficult, of course, is what type of life she lived. Did she live a life where she told everybody what was going on? Did she talk to her mum and dad about who she was seeing, who she was in contact with? If she didn't and she was a very private person, of course, it's far harder. With technology now, it's easier, of course. We've got CCTV. We've also got communication. We've got the mobile phone. There might be the uh, computer. So there are other things that yeah. the police need to an analyse, but that takes time. And one obvious thing, of course, is sourcing that phone call she made to her mother where was that call made um, from technology now enables them to do that and again I'm a little surprised we don't know that well I think the police or maybe we do uh, yes uh, <laughs> maybe I mean, they I think, do we I don't. think there's a lot of information clearly the police have got uh, which hasn't yet been put into the public domain the yeah. police have got some obviously angles and avenues that they are following up on and one of those will be the last location she was at yes. and that will give them a timeline yeah. to be able to work from this is a big investigation that they're undertaking now I think the sadness is is that probably something has happened to her now uh, the chances yeah. of it being a stranger very rare someone that she knew Mark, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much, Steve, for being with us. Thank you.